leave while I was gone and put it on my desk just in case. Uh, but this is an easy one for a pastor. Lincoln, Atlas, Wesley, Chow. You get that right? Absolutely. Man, what a precious, uh, what a precious uh, child. And so I wanted to open up and uh, actually as we uh, pray today, uh, Lincoln, my prayer is you will grow strong, not only in your stature, but also in this word. Let God's word guide you, help you, and one day save you in Christ, uh, Brother Ray and East Marietta Baptist Church. And oh my goodness. So I also ask, this is their first Sunday, uh, if you have small children, it's okay to see the baby, but let's not touch the baby or sneeze on the baby and things like that. But I want to pray for them, and we're going to open up prayer at the same time. Uh, Lord, I'm just humble. What a precious gift. There's no other gift that comes from your hand, Father, than the gift of life. Not only our salvation and spiritual life, but God, you are the one to take time. And God, just create life and then entrust us with that life. So, Father, you've given us this little boy. Let us as a faith family realize the responsibility to praise you and worship you, God, for your goodness, but to be responsible with you, God, to give him back. We as a family to uphold each other, to help each other, hold each other accountable as our life continues. Thank you for our faith family. Thank you for this child. God, the services today, I ask you to put your hand upon and get us out of the way as we truly look into this ministry of tears. We love you today and we praise you in Jesus' name. And all of us said, amen, amen. Love you. Let's stand together, uh, church. fellowship while we're while we're standing y'all go ahead and fellowship greet one another this morning Within my heart a melody, Jesus whispers sweet and low, fear not I am with thee, peace be still, in all of myself and flow. Thank 
coming back to welcome me far beyond the starry sky. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every singing as I go. Sing it one more time. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that thing. Master, Y'all can be seated. So, uh, in our prayer circle just a minute ago, uh, I had someone say that, that that 40 years old is where they actually started serving. Uh, that they'd been a pew sitter for years. But at 40 years old, surrendered to start serving. 
Got others here that have served a lot longer than that, right? But it doesn't matter when you start, right? It matters that you serve. So uh, I'm going to sing a song this morning, and if y'all know the chorus, y'all can, I'm sure you do, you can join with me on the chorus. last few Sundays has been anything but typical. We didn't have power. Our power got turned off at 6 a.m. Sunday before last. Uh, so that meant there was no projectors and no microphones. And uh, But nobody cared. We just went on to, ch hey girl. We just went... <laughs> Okay, I'll let them gather up. In, anyway, we didn't have a uh, didn't have a microphone last week, and so uh, our church actually at uh, East Marietta is about as big as this building. Believe it or not, uh, our mother church uh, where the orphanage is. So uh, I had preached two services that morning in Cacao, uh, beginning uh, no heat, no air, uh, no fan, no microphone, just people pouring their heart out to God. Uh, the good thing is you don't have to have power to have water, and so everybody was able uh, to take baths and get ready uh, for church uh, that morning. Uh, and then last week we were back in Manila, and so we uh, decided to meet, uh, since it was Memorial Day, we actually met on the grounds of the Manila American Cemetery, which is a World War II 
memorial where there's about, uh, I'm going to say, 13,000, 14,000 uh, American soldiers that are buried there on the grounds. And then uh, there's a monument or uh, memorial where there's about 30,000 of those that didn't come back home where their names are scribed. So it's been, a, the last two Sundays has been different to say the least, but the same God, the same spirit. Uh, I can't uh, tell you uh, the spirit of those services. Uh, we ended up uh, speaking at uh, all of our churches that we've planted, uh, speaking to those congregations. Some of them are very young. Some of them are very uh, mature. Some of them are older. Some of them are doing well. This is what, this is what I noticed about all our churches is this reflection outward. Everybody is pointed that way. Uh, when we got to our home that Saturday morning, I said, hey, where's our kids? And they're like, well, they're doing Bible classes. And so our teenagers at East Merida Baptist Church is, we were going out, and they had six different Bible classes for kids in six different communities. And just, man, it, it's all about sharing, all about going, all about investing. And so... To say uh, the least, uh, my cup has been full, and I come to Psalm uh, chapter 56, verse 8 today. <clears throat> if you go back and you study the Middle East, and you study, you'll find a unique item called a lycometry. I'd be honest with you, I'd never heard of a lycometry, but that's what it is. A lycometry is a, a, a glass or brass vial with a little funnel at the top, and it was made to catch your tears. And during mourning and during funerals, when I say mourning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, mourning, uh, the loss of a life or at a funeral, people would take these lycometries, and the family, as they cried, they would catch their tears, and then they would put them in the grave or the tomb of the deceased. And so all these through the years, when you... Uh, as historians and uh, began to uncover these graves in the ancient Middle East, especially in Persia and in the Roman empires, they would find these lycometries, and it, would, it, was the, it was what was there to catch tears. So we understand the background behind David's writings here in Psalm 56. David is on the run. Uh, he's exiled basically from his homeland, and David gets to a point, and uh, he simply says these words. You know, and he's talking to God, he's been in Psalm 56, verse 8, you know my wanderings. And the word wanderings there is, you know that my wanderings of my mind, I'm distraught. I don't know which way to go. I don't know which way is up. You know that, God. You know everything about me. You know that right now as I pray these words and write these words, I'm just really don't know which way to go. But then David went on to say, in my wanderings, put my tears into your bottle. That's the lycometry. Are they not in your book? Anytime you see a question in God's word, God always uses a question that he knows you know the answer to. For example, you've heard me share my life. When God asked me who was going to preach, I knew the answer to that because he directed that question to me. When God asked me who was going to uh, move out here, I knew the answer to that question. Even though God spoke to me through a question, when I answered it, I knew that he was talking to me. So when David says, are they not in your book, David is simply asking God or stating a fact that God is keeping record of our tears. So then it struck me, and I began this journey, if you would, of a ministry of tears. It's the same question we have today. What is a ministry of tears? God says that, or David says, God keeps a book of our tears, and every tear that's ever fallen from your face as a child of God, God has penned in his journal. He's got every one of them. I begin to look back and reflect. To be honest, we I studied a lot of this when we were uh, in Behold waiting on a flight the next day and just spent several hours sitting uh, there in that resort just studying, and I begin to think. Could you imagine the tears that you've shed in your wanderings when families were going wrong, 
during deaths, during tragedies, when you were crying out to God, can you just picture for a second, God still has those tears, and he's even got a journal of those tears. I thought, what would that look like? The Bible says here that God's got them in his book. So I thought, so God's got a book of tears. No doubt, if you read that book, according to the Bible, God saw Hezekiah's tears in 2 Kings chapter 20, uh, verse 5, because he tells the writer, hey, tell Hezekiah, I've seen his tears. We know that God saw Esther's tears. If you go to Esther chapter 8, verse 3. In her wonderings, when her mind was gone, what are we going to do? They're going to kill all of my people. The Bible says God saw her tears. We know when we study and we tell people, hey, read the book of Job during their worst times, during when everything's coming down on them, we know God saw Job's tears. We know here, not only in Psalm 56, but Psalm uh, chapter 6, verse 6, God saw David's tears. So there's a recording of tears throughout God's words. In Lamentations, verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 11, God sees or saw Jeremiah's tears. If you look in the New Testament, the father of the dead little girl whom Jesus raised from the dead. You all know the story, but the Bible records that it was tears that God wanted to make sure he recorded in Mark chapter 9, verse 24. God saw the woman that washed Jesus' feet. The Bible said she washed his feet with what in Luke chapter 7? Her tears. And Paul says, this is what I wanted to hinge on, tears is a part of the ministry Acts chapter 20, verse 19, as Luke is pinning his journal with Paul. Huh. The challenge to the church today, if God takes time to collect every tear that falls from your eyes, why do we hold those tears back? Why have we come to a point of where pride keeps us from our Lord that is wanting to record your tears, even so much cares about you that he catches every tear? I'm afraid without tears, we really don't have a ministry. Without tears, there's no show for concern. There's no show for compassion, no show for pain, no show for disappointment, no show for concern. Many of you know Mr. Charlton was one of my spiritual heroes, and I have one of his books here. And so I began to look through his book, and as I looked through the book Mr. Charlton had, I can begin to see what mattered to him. I begin to understand his character a little bit. As you begin to look, I just took three notes out of uh, his book, and I believe the first one may be from uh, Corinthians, and we know that. A lot of people will uh, use that and say, well, God won't put more on you than you can't handle. Well, that's close to the truth. The truth is actually God won't tempt you more than you can handle without providing a way of escape. But I really like Mr. Charlton's. He said, amen. If I was reading this and Mr. Charlton's passed, then no doubt... He's emphasizing to me, don't worry. God will not tempt you more than you can stand without providing a way of escape. So just when you think in your wonderings that you can't figure this out or can't go on, God will take care of you. The next uh, one I think I put there is nothing can keep us from the love of God. Nothing. And he's highlighted and highlighted and we see that. So I begin to understand in Mr. Charlton's book what's important. That God's not going to forsake you and God will never leave you. And then if you end the Old Testament between Malachi and Matthew and you come to the New Testament, right where the books divide, he, Mr. Charlton had this note here. My prayer is to know you more each day of my life. You, God, know our heart. When I look at that, I say, I can see a little bit of Mr. Charlton's thought process. I can see his heart. He's an older gentleman that writes, my prayer is to know you more. His Bible here, obviously, I shared with the youth this morning, his Bible is definitely not in mint condition, to say the least, but you can, I don't want to turn pages because they're very fragile, but you can see some of the things there. So that's Mr. Charlton. So then I begin to think, if God tells me, that tears he keeps in a book of journals, then when I see tears, am I reading God's book? When I see tears on your face, is it actually God revealing his heart? Is it actually God painting a picture for me of what his book looks like when I see tears come down your face? 
I began to think about that for a second, and I thought, so God is beginning to show me. These past two weeks, God allowed me to see a few of his notes in his book. If he writes fallen tears in his books, then friend, when I see tears, God is simply allowing me to see some of the, some of the content in his book. The first thing I thought of was if we we're going to put the book of tears in chapters was regeneration, being born again, the freedom chapter. What does that look like? If God catches the tears, then what does his chapter look like? Would there be a chapter in his book of tears called the regeneration chapter? And if I could open that up, what would that look like? What would God say in his book of tears about regeneration? had the opportunity this week. If I turned to the regeneration chapter and I went A, B, C, D, F, and I went to the F's and got to the F, I would find the word Felix. Some of you know Felix. You can see Paul's tears in the Bible. When he was bound by Felix, he shared his heart with Felix. He shared the gospel with Felix, but Felix said, I need a more of a convenient time. So we wouldn't find that Felix in the Bible, in the book of tears. Who is this man of Felix? Yet there's a man that sat on the front row of our little church in Maponis, and as I preached, I began to see him weep, and I proclaimed to him God's promises to calm the storms, and this man who sat on the front row is shouting, he's revived, and he's soaking up every word, and tears are coming down, and I can see the sponge in his life. Who is this man? Who is this man that's named Felix that's sitting on the front row? I'm talking about how God calms the peace and the storm in your life, how God gives you peace, and there's nothing but tears in his life. What can God show me? And so I ask, hey, what is this guy's, what is the backstory behind him, if I could get a backstory? And then I begin to understand the book of tears and how God begins to speak through that and this regeneration of what you and I all walk through. My man's name is Felix. Felix is a vile guy. He's not your average person. Mm -mm -mm. Felix is a man that's a gambler, a rooster fighter, ruthless man that carried out all orders by the, his political bosses, whether lawful or unlawful, meaning he's probably broke all the commandments, and you know the Ten Commandments. Felix is a man that come to a point in his life I can't live with what all I've done. And so he pulls out a gun and puts it to his temple, a 45 caliber. And he said, a voice said, put the gun up. He put the gun up. The next morning, he wakes up to hearing the word of God being preached. He's a ruthless man. But all of a sudden, tears begin to fall down his face. He can't understand what's happening to me. I'm a man. Tears, 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 tears. The voice is preaching. He's listening. Tears is falling. And he finally goes, and it's Pastor Michael, and he says, Hey, tell me what you're talking about. You're under conviction. God will save you. He won't. I've done too much bad. You don't know what I've done. And then Michael says, but you don't know the grace of God. God died for all of your sins. His name is Jesus Christ. He will forgive you of all your sins. He will regenerate you, cleanse you. He will restore you. And this man, Felix, tears running down his face, gives his life to Christ. Sells all his roosters. Sells all his land. Immediately quits his job. Who I'm talking about is the pastor of one of our churches. There he is, soaking up every word of, well, it's not knowledge coming out of his mouth, but every word that he's saying. There he is in his church. This is what Felix said. Sam talked about commitment. If he saved me, I'll do for the rest of my life whatever he wants me to do. So for seven hours, Felix gets on a motorcycle and drives the East Merida Baptist Church of Maponis and preaches the gospel and drives seven hours back to Takao where his house is. This man here is a sponge, but he understands God's book that he's holding 
of regeneration, tears of regeneration. And then I began to think as I was meditating and thinking back on Felix and our relationship, then God brought me right back all to full circle. Tears began to swell up. I realized that in 2017 there would be no voice proclaiming the gospel in cacao. Tears swell up when I realized that if there's no giving, if there's no effort, if there's no willingness, if there's no mission, if there's no one committed, if there's people that just sit on the pew and there's no hope, there would be no tears. Tears swell up when I realize the sacrifice during revival, when there is movement, when the God has been able to go forth, when God has been able to use the church. We see Chica, we see others that give their life to Christ. We see the tears that fall down. And God shows us a little insight of the book that he's keeping when we put ourselves and put our focus outside and say, God, here I am. How can you use me? We begin to see some of God's words. God cares about these freedom tears. He cares enough to record them. Tears should swell up when you and I come to the grips with the fact you may have forgotten, I may have forgotten what he has done for you. Those tears are recorded. God took time to, when he regenerated you, when he cleansed you, when you were born again, he kept every tear. He knows what you've done. He knows your past. And yet he still chose to die for you and to give you new life or bring you into eternal life. And then he took time for the tears that you were weeping to catch them. Do you know how much he loves you to be able to record that? Just a journal entry in God's journal with your tears. The tears. Wow. I thought as I began to take a minute last night I was at the house. I'm learning how to operate an iPhone there, Lily Kate. I didn't know I could punch in East Marietta Baptist Church in a year. And now I've got like 8,000 pictures that's just been made here on this hillside. But you know what? I caught myself then just scrolling through. I was going to send Nick some of them, but there's just baptism, 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 like the last six, seven years. And I just sat there and, and I began to just look. And the tears came as I saw different faces, different families. God has not forgotten you. So much so, he loves you so much that when he gave you, gave you hope through his son Jesus Christ, he loved you enough that he still recorded even the tears that shed from your face. In that chapter, there's regeneration. But then there's other chapters in this book. If I, could, if I was able to paint a picture, as I was able to look around, I'd be like, okay, I get regeneration, but what about restoration? Oh, tears of restoration. It took me a minute to understand this concept. Tears falling while the inside is being restored. Tears falling on the outside while the inside is being restored. It's sort of the hard concept, but let me explain. Many of you probably like homemade ice cream. I like homemade ice cream. Matter of fact, we had some homemade ice cream this week. If you've ever made homemade ice cream, you know how it is. You get all the stuff and all the ingredients. It's all slushy and just, you know, ingredients. You pour it in there and you begin to spin it. And hit. Watch carefully. How do you know when it's done? How do you know when it's working? How do you know when it's making? Condensation begins to form on the outside while it's being cured on the inside. Everybody can see that picture. Last week, God allowed me to speak in front of some brothers and sisters that said a battle. Went weeks without food or rice. Everything gone, the fruit's gone, everything gone. And their pastor and his wife. <laughs> I couldn't help but one lady that sat right to my right. I think there's... She's right there. See that blue chair? That's her with her hands raised. As we begin to sing and to praise God and worship God amidst the storm and amidst losing everything as far as food and going all those weeks and just the stress and the turmoil. And then, as I I noticed on one of Scott's pictures, because I was looking through our rolls while I was preaching, he actually caught a picture. She's right there, right behind that blue chair. This is what I noticed. (laughs) The whole time I was preaching, she sat right there. 
and wept and wept and wept and wept and wept. And God began to show me what restoration looks like. When you start to see in condensation on the outside, there's healing on the inside. It was like God was transforming her. I don't know her walk. I don't know how many days she went. I know she went many days without electricity, many days without rice, uh, many days trying to care for her family, care for her church family as a pastor's wife. I could see the burden, yet I could see the word of God restoring her life. If you browse through that chapter, you begin to see name after name. There's many tears shed when the burden was heavy. Then God sends his word out or his servant brings a word. It brings restoration. My goodness. This week I was surprised just a little bit. Wednesday I got a call, and so I don't want you to be surprised. And Just listen to me for a second. But Wednesday this week, uh, my heart, be honest with you, my burden got heavy. I shared with the youth this morning, why? Why is it so hard when you try so hard and things fall apart? I got word and learned that we can no longer use Allen Line Church for our Memorial Day and Labor Day services. Okay. Is it something we've done? No. Matter of fact, y'all clean it up really well. We want it to be known as a school and not a church was my explanation okay I figured I have an address and he's like well I know what this is about I said no no I just want to thank y'all for allowing us an opportunity to be able to use your building about the last seven eight years it's really been helpful so thank you if you change your position please let us know but thank you for allowing us to use your building and then it hit me, that regeneration, in the midst of my tears. John chapter 17, verse 14. <laughs> I want you, because I don't know what you're going through, but Landry nailed this in the Philippines. We have the word. It's right there. First, you, the word. And then you're going to be hated because of the world. I'm not saying Alan Lyon folks hate us. What I'm saying is, the world, meaning the system of the world and the thinking of the world and the ways of the world are always going to come against you if you have the word. So listen very carefully to me. If you're wondering why it's so hard to lead your family, it's because the world is against you. If you're wondering why it's so hard to lead a church, it's because the world is against you. So when you have setbacks, it should not discourage you. It should only just give you the stamina to want to do more, want to do better. I told Candy, I said, hey, we'll, we'll, this Labor Day, we'll do it. It'll be bigger and better. I don't know God's plan, but it'll be bigger and better. You have to understand when God says, hey, they're going to hate you because the world hates me and you have the word. It's not because of you and it's not because of the energy and the effort. It's because of what you stand for. So if you stand for Jesus Christ, it should only motivate you to do more. Hey, how can we take this as a stepping stone instead of a stumbling block and move forward? The only way that works is when God begins to restore you that this is not a stumbling block like a typhoon. It's a stepping stone to go forward and give you more stamina that you had than when you walked in here. So I get it. I talked to the young people this morning. I said, you know why it's so hard to live a godly life? Because everything is against you. It's why, what the world is wanting to do is make everything easy so that you'll give up. Why would I read my Bible at school when it's so difficult and so hard? And if I give up, it's easy. That's exactly what this verse is saying. So what I'm telling you, listen, husband, if you're struggling, listen, dad, if you're struggling, listen, mom, if you're struggling, listen, teenager, if you're struggling. The reason it's so hard is the world hates you. That means the system of the world is going to do everything they can so that you put forth energy, you put forth effort, you put forth to do a mission, and it gets knocked off its feet. Then realize that the word of God is simply coming to true in your life, and that means he's alive. My goodness. Don't give up. Don't back down. God is saying, hey, I'm recording your tears. You should have tears of concern. You should have tears of disappointment. But I got you back. Keep going forward. Keep going forward. 
Wow, it's pretty simple. <laughs> if you're living the truth, then you're going to have setbacks. You want to be restored today? Let those tears go and realize no matter how hard you try, no matter how much you do, no matter how much effort you put into it, the reason it seems to be failing is because the world and the system of the world is against you because you have the Word of God. You have the Word of God. <laughs> Let go. Don't quit. Let God take what has become slush in your soul and turn it back into ice cream. Get back on the fire line. Get back on witnessing to your family. Get back to your devotions. Get back to encouraging your friends. Get back committed. Let the Word of God restore you this morning. God's got His little book of tears. There's a regeneration chapter and there's a restoration chapter. And he's recording. Don't think he's forsaken you. Don't think you just can't get going again. There's plenty of opportunity. Vaca I just talked to Lacey about Vacation Bible School. We'll need somebody to partner with her to direct that. We'll need all kind of teachers, helpers. You've got to be committed. Step out and say, hey, I can do this. I'm excited about this tears and if I had to say anything it, and this is just a small this is just Ray a small part of what I believe is in God's book there's definitely regeneration chapters because I know my name is written there there's definitely restoration chapters my name's been there many times there's a reunion chapter I longed for my faith family when we were gone. It's a reunion. Yeah, I'm gone one Sunday, and, but about 10 days, and I want to be with my faith family. I longed for my faith family. I couldn't wait to get home. Yet at the same time, I couldn't wait to get there to see all our faith families that are in the, the Philippines, see what God's doing within the ministry. I long to be with my family. But God showed me a lot of tears while I, in the Philippines, while I was in the Philippines this time. The joy of people was overwhelming. The mother lovely sat in service. Her tears streamed the whole time. It was just a few years ago, the first time that we met, we were putting her in a truck, carrying her to the emergency room with her daughter who was deathly ill. Three years later, she's given her life to Christ. Now she's has a healthy grandbaby, and we're worship together. What a re You just had to be there. And she said and cried and cried and cried, and I, I preached, and she cried, and after the, we took pictures, and we cried, and she hugged me, and we cried, and it was just a reunion. That's her there in the Nike hat, and that's obviously lovely when she was in the hospital and not doing good. That's lovely two Sundays ago in church, and then there's her mother and her dad. She just cried. We, we just embraced each other and cried. The lady that had the sugar that was over 800, she was, there's her in the, we had taken her to the emergency room four years ago now. Her sugar is over 800. Dr. Reynolds was like, she's going to have a stroke. We got to get her to the emergency room. What happened to her? There she is. She's in the church back row, her and her husband. Just tears of, I mean, just a reunion. You wonder what happens to these folks. Reunion. All we do is just cry and speak and hug and cry and speak and hug and cry and speak and hug. And then many of you probably saw on Facebook Angel. There's Angel in 2019 where her family walked up the mountain and said, Are you Pastor Ray? We're looking for him. Angel's burned herself really bad. She'd set her clothes on fire and she had all these burns. There's in a the hospital. It's horrible. What happened to her during COVID? What she did, did we do any good? Did, was there hope? And then there she is this year. <laughs> Reunions are special. I can remember many reunions with our faith family, many reunions of you that are sitting here from hospital beds. Sadly, to funeral homes. From disappointing and discouraging walks within your family. And then there's a reunion. 
God catches every tear. The tears were only caught by loved ones in the ancient Roman, Persian Empire. And God said, he caught your tears. God loves you to catch your tears. One day, <laughs> I begin to think, we'll be able to see how the ministry comes full circle. Did we plant seeds during our Christmas mission? One day. We don't know the three or 4,000 people that may have come through there, or 2,000 people may have come through there. But can you imagine a reunion? A few years back, we had our school mission with their seeds planted. What's the full circle? <laughs> These churches that were planted, what's the full circle? Our encouragement in Montana, what's the full circle? There'll be a reunion one day. <laughs> we'll be able to see how the ministry comes full circle. The tears that will be shed, we will see the true impact of our labors when that day comes. A reunion in the sky with our parents that went on, our grandparents that went on, our family that may have went before us. A reunion, but most of all, the Bible says, God will close his book of tears. No need for it anymore, Ted. Because Revelation chapter 21 verse 4 says, God will wipe away all their tears. His book will close. I don't know about you. But I've overwhelmed this journey. And it made me want to focus more outward. Made me want to be reunited. But it encouraged me more to keep going forward more than anything. Listen, don't give up. God's in the restoration business. There's tears of restoration he's catching. God's in the re regeneration business if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. My friend, he won't drop your tears if you'll come to him. God's in the reunion business. <laughs> Let's don't get so inwardly focused that we don't even realize God sees our tears. Father, I come to you today. A different message, a different style. But God, I shared what you put on my heart for the last two weeks. I pray if there's someone here, Father, that's never given their life to you. There's someone here that's been holding on and they feel like they've just had setback after setback. But today they realize, God, that your word's true. You've seen every tear. That today maybe we gather at this altar, Father, and thank you for reminding us just how much you love us. Lord, I pray today we would not be embarrassed by our tears. For that one that we've been witnessing to and we just felt like giving up. For that loved one in our family that we seem like the harder we try, the farther we push them away. You remind us today. They hate us, not because of us, but because of the word. God, you've seen every tear. You know how hard it is, how disappointing, how discouraging it is. But God, you've caught our tears. You've loved us enough. And you've penned it in your book. Remind us of that, Father, I do pray. In Jesus' name I pray. And all of us said, Amen. I mean, would you stand with me, church? I don't know what your tears are for, what your broken heart's for, but I know God sees every one. If you feel God impeding you, would you come this morning? If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I pray you'd come today. No, religion but a relationship with him, just like Pastor Felix. Would you come today? Stay.
read this, uh, not now, but in the coming years, it may be in a better land, we'll read the meaning of our tears, and there some time we'll understand, then trust in God through all our days, fear not, for he doth hold thy hand, through dark thy way, shall sing and pray, sometime, sometime we'll understand, I challenge you to reflect on your tears today, um, if you could be seated just real quick, I had just a couple announcements to make, um, so, real quick, because I know Nick's recording, there'll be a lot of you. How can you be a preacher if you just got saved? That is true. The Bible says that a, a man to preach the word of God is not to be a novice, which is a new believer. I'm very aware of that. So, Felix is actually in our Bible training, and there's an old deacon at our church. He's married to Baptist Church of the Philippines that rides with him on the back of that motorcycle for seven hours, and he guides him and uh, helps him. So... Uh, that was the first thing that I was, somebody be like, man, you can't. So we, uh, he's being discipleship, and he actually has somebody with him side by side, but he's in our Bible training. So uh, I look, some of you will meet Felix one day. Uh, some of you will get an opportunity uh, to meet him one day. Other than that, uh, I'll let the nursery come out here. Um, I'm excited. So please come back tonight. We'll start at 6. I'll be in 2 Timothy. And then we'll have uh, just uh, maybe some discussions. Please reflect on this. If you would like to serve in Vacation Bible School, if you're wondering how you can serve, please, I need to, I need to know. And, to, and tonight we're going to talk about different missions. Hey, Waylon, what's going on, fella? Uh, uh, man, that's what I'm talking about. So there's a lot. Uh, let me close that. here. There's a lot that uh, we're going to hash out tonight. How can we be more impactful in our community? How can we plant more seeds? Thank you for uh, your youth. If you, didn't, if you missed this morning, I simply told your kids to start taking baths. That was my whole message this morning. You can ask him what that means. Uh, some of them didn't come to church this morning with a bath. So we've chastised them, and so they should be, uh, they'll be able to, to tell you parents if you have a teenager. Um, so... I also wanted to recognize a couple of couples uh, so that uh, you might want to come and congratulate them. Uh, we have one couple here, Trey and Olivia. Y'all have it? But yeah, does everybody know Trey? Oh, look at that. I'm going to try to keep this spiritual, brother, but you're fixing to turn in your man car. But anyway, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So, uh, Trey, y'all care to come up here for us? That way we can come and, and congratulate you. So, uh, I'm not sure when their wedding is. Do you have a date yet? Smart man. I'm, I'm just kidding. Well, do you have a date? Let's, and then uh, Angelica and Caleb, if you'll, you'll come up here. Uh, so, many of you uh, probably know their story. You want to come around and, and uh, shake their hand. But I do want to uh, pray with both couples and uh, just give them the right hand of Christian fellowship. So, Trey and Olivia are engaged when? I'm glad she answered that. I saw your eyes get, like, really big. May the 6th, right? So, in uh, the guidance of God's word, I like to challenge uh, those couples and encourage them, counsel them. But at the same time, I want to make sure they're not living outside of God's word. Uh, so, in Angelica, I nearly said Angelica and Drew. Isn't that funny, Drew? <laughs> Angelica and Caleb uh, have come, uh, but there's one thing that you will see, uh, Angelica, let me see how to say this, Angelica is actually moving in with Caleb, and Miss Marie, you know that is not biblical, and so you know how I would feel about that, so even though they're engaged, they are actually married, they've been married since April, right, yeah, so I don't want you to see a stumbling block. 
Yeah, it shot me too, right, Doug? You come back from the Philippines and you get, hey, I'm married and you can't use the church at Island Line. I'm like, okay, God, nobody else come in here, right? But uh, we do want to congratulate them. They still want to have a, a wedding celebration. Would that be the easiest way to say that? Wedding celebration, but uh, it give you an opportunity today. Hey, none of their friends know, so nobody tell anybody. And we'll go, I'm just kidding. But I just wanted to, you to come up and congratulate both those couples. Tell them you'll be praying for them. Uh, and we will be, uh, hey, rocking right along. I will get to uh, continue counseling. At church, I will see you tonight at 6 o'clock if I'm awake. I'm just kidding. I'll be here at 6 o'clock. All right. Let's stand together, Sam, if you will play us out. Y'all go around and uh, talk with them, please.